Thank you, Father, for being a God of faithfulness, a God, a good God, in all circumstances and in all time, at all times. I pray, Father, a blessing for all present. I pray, Lord, a blessing on our children, young as they are, and upon the parents who entrust them to the teachers. And just keep us alerted, Lord, that we are your children. I pray, Lord, that as we look into your words, you give us a humble heart, a heart that will not only just hear, but will also act upon the way that you want us to. This we pray and ask in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Thank you for praying for one another and just continue to do that. All right, don't take each other for granted. People come in, some of us are very excited. Some of us are not so excited, but remember to pray a blessing that we have kept the Sabbath and, and, and the effort that is behind it all that we don't always can see. All right, uh, I'm going to continue my message from last Sunday, uh, but let me do a very quick review of where we are. Uh, actually, from December until now, and I find that literally, I think I'm the one that's going to wrap up almost uh, the messages about moving. You know, we are talking about moving out of this place. Uh, may not necessarily be the physical move, but we are talking about moving and it has been emphasized to you. It could be spiritual and it could be physical. And starting it off, Pastor Joshua, I'll just make it very clear to us that change, whether you like it or you love it, is inevitable. It will come, there will be change, but when God is the one that initiates the change, it is always for our growth. It is always for something better. And when we look to Him and we depend on him, or we are forced to depend upon him even more, then it is always hopeful. Then Roy Lam followed through with Joshua chapter 3 uh, of how to move victoriously or how to make this one, uh, uh, this move, right, an experience, right, of what we call success, not necessarily in the world's way, but it is. And he emphasized a heart to follow. A heart to follow, the faith to believe, and the courage to act. And last week, I distilled it a little bit about this, and that as we follow, all right, it is our obedience to follow. We must be obedient, but we must be sure that we are doing it God's way. You can follow God in your own way and do things in your own way. But we want to make sure that we are doing it God's way. And I highlighted two case studies of how if we end up, all right, two person who ended up with the best intention, right, with the best motive, right, ended up with fear, Right, with panic and restlessness because they were doing it their own way. And it doesn't necessarily take place immediately. It might be years down the road, but that's exactly what happened. Now, just in case you think that I am rounding up this message, we are at the end of our transition. We are actually at the beginning of transition. The way I look at it, we are just at the very beginning. All right, we are just... At the entry stage, and at the entry stage, I think it is important to remind ourselves that the spiritual, as we evaluate, we are evaluating. When we evaluate, the spiritual must precede the practical. The spiritual aspect must precede the practical. We must be paying attention to the ministry first, more than about places and everything. What is it God wants to tell us? What would be the ministry we will be engaged in or we should have been engaging in and should now start? Or is it a new ministry? That are the things that we should be praying about as we enter, we should be evaluating and we should look at the spiritual first. 
And in all change and moved, I've been warned by my uh, peer mentoring people. They said, you know, every time we move, we lose people. They said, there's not a single time when we move, we don't lose people. And therefore, today, I want to share with you a message that is upon my heart about the right mindset. Having a right mindset is critical in moving in unity. We want to move as a body. Roy Lam has already said, you know, the whole body move and everything. In order for that to happen, three steps I suggest. All right. The first step is acceptance. Acceptance. Two things, as you read the whole Bible, I find it this. Tells us about change. All right. First one is change happens in everything. In life, in your business, in your career, in your physical well-being, change happens in everything. It's not only about the spiritual and it is inevitable. It's going to take place. It's going to take place whether you like it or not. And we are, we would be wise to embrace it and to deal with it. To deal with the change and move on. Not bury it. Not just cast it aside, but rather to deal with it and then move on. Because dealing with change with the right mindset in Christ, all right, will bring us hope. Now, to, to support this, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. In fact, the whole of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, if you read it, you find that the first thing it says that change is inevitable. It says there is a time for not only something, but everything. And then in the following verses, which I have not printed out for you and you can read on your own, it involves life, it involves building up, tearing down. It involves every area of it. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven. Inevitable. Inevitable. So in flesh, we learn to embrace it. And then in verse 11, it says, He, referring to God, has made everything beautiful in His time. That's hope. That's hope. We must learn how to rely upon we must learn how to look to Him. We must learn to keep on trusting Him in faith. He has set, also set eternity. So it's not about today physical, but it's about eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot phantom, which is true. We cannot phantom everything what God has done from the beginning to the end. But it points out clearly that in its time, God will make everything Beautiful. Our hope is in God when we change. So let's accept change. It's inevitable. I think at the rate that we are going and the way that we have been up to this stage, the change is coming. You can't reject it anymore. It has come. It's just how do we deal with it? Are we going to accept it? And I'm not saying accept it in a sense that no choice already. Lah. What can we do or anything like that? But we need to accept it rather than resist the change. That's the second thing. The Bible teaches us, Jesus teaches this, that there is a tendency to resist change. The more we are aware of it, that change is inevitable and that we tend to resist, we are more prepared. We can train our mind not to resist it. We can train our mind to learn to accept it. Jesus in two parables in the New Testament highlight our resistance to change. Even if it's for our growth and for our good, even if it's for something better, he highlights it that we are very resistant to it. Matthew 9, 16. 
He says, no one sew a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. For the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do men pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst and the wine will run out and the wine skin will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skin and both are preserved. Don't get this wrong. It's not that we must anyhow accept new ideas or new ideas are good and the old ideas are bad. That's not the teaching. It's actually highlighting. Jesus was teaching his disciples the new chapter of their life, of the Holy Spirit coming and working of the Holy Spirit in their lives. He was teaching them about that new chapter is going to happen. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the time could not take that. They were so rooted in the teaching and in their way of functioning and the way that they have been functioning that they cannot accept that there is a new thing that is coming. And therefore, Jesus used these two parables to point out our tendency to resist change, even if it's for our good. When I read this, I realized something. It is better to accept change than to resist it. Resisting will only cause us pain, will cause us to miss the blessing in Jesus' case. The Holy Spirit empowering them. They miss that altogether. They want to do it in their human form, their own human way. And we are actually hurting ourselves. And both the wine skin will burst and the wine will run out. It's a loose, loose situation. I remember I was taught about change. And the example was given about Nokia handphone. It has become actually worldwide. And many authors have written books about their failures and everything. Nokia. They dropped from the top selling handphone. 90% of the world's market belong to them. Within a year, they dropped to the right, to the bottom. And finally, it was acquired. And people study behind it and everything and all that. Two main things stood up. Several reasons are given, but two main reasons came out. First is their resistance to change. They reach a stage where they reach so much and they were saying we are okay and they think we do not need to change. And at that point there, a lot of things was coming in, especially software. They were looking only at their hardware, their phone was good and everything. They did not look at their software. That was one factor. Resistant to change. I know commenters, uh, commenters have written about it and say that there are more reasons than that and everything. But primarily, they lost to iPhone, to Samsung, is because they were paying attention to their hardware but not their software. Resistant to change. And then they had leadership issue. Within the organization, the internal structure start to break down. And in the, it's breaking down, actually, it was pointed to complacency. 90%. Who else can take over? How long? It cannot be in one year you drop right to the bottom. There was complacency. There was, of course, internal conflict. But the conflict was caused by, you rub my back, I rub your back. You pet me, I pet you. Let's not bring up the real situation that we are dropping. Leadership issue. Today, as a church, we need to be mindful of learning to accept change, to learn, to grow, and to mature in the process. Last week, I mentioned, I said the process is more important than the result. 
The process is more important than the result. We want to learn. Even if we make mistakes, we want to learn. We want to mature in it. We want to grow in love. We want to grow in depth of trusting the Lord. That's what I mean. Not about matters to be successful. Not about matters to be a big church or anything at all. But the process is to learn to hear what God is saying to us and to obey that. We cannot, we cannot. And it's our tendency, human tendency, to hang on to the past or our current emotions and matters. I remember in Haggai, when the, the, the lecturer was teaching, about using PowerPoint and everything. I, I was resistant. Well, I was comfortable not using PowerPoint. That's the first thing. I was also afraid of exploring PowerPoint because I'm not good at it at that point there. Not that I'm good now. But that's really the case. I was resistant to it. And I gave myself reason, you know, PowerPoint is not the best. Everybody is looking there. Nobody is looking. And eye contact is important and everything. But the truth of it, the ultimate thing is that I'm resistant. I want to hang on to my emotion and everything. And finally, the lecturer one day had an opportunity to talk to me. And of course, we talk about other things and all that. And then he asked this question, How Bing, why do you think PowerPoint is not good? And I shared with him. He says, your preaching is it more important people look at you and forget it or more important that people go away able to remember because you use PowerPoint? Resistant to change. We cannot hang on to the past. We must learn to how to accept it rather than resist it. Remind, in, as a church today, we must be mindful that our software is ministry to people. Don't concentrate on the hardware, location, the building, the equipments, and everything. That's our software. People are the very fundamental God has called us to minister to. And in restructuring, maybe Nokia can teach us something. That the church rises or falls on leadership. Within Nokia leadership, there were issues. And it points to us, the church rises and falls on leadership. Change usually means leadership takes a major role and it rises or falls. Facing acceptance, right? this very stage, until we have heard God speak, we can be sure that God has spoken and we come to acceptance, accepting it brings us to a faith crisis. What do you mean by faith crisis? You can say, I accept it, but are you going to move on from there? Or are you going to say, I won't accept it, and you drop out? It's a faith crisis. Up to this point, we have not obeyed yet. It's just at a juncture where we will remain stuck or we will move on. And the next step is adjustment. Adjustment. With acceptance, there must be adjustment. It is a mistake. And I learned this in Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. It is a mistake to think that God speaks, we obey. And then we wonder in the end, how come never obey? It's because God speaks. We face a crisis. That if this is his word, do I trust God in faith and completely? And if I do, I move on to make adjustment. Adjustment is the first step towards obedience. Adjustment has to be made before we can even obey. We need to adjust above many things. Straight away, we are thinking about physical. But herein, we are talking about our mental perspectives. Look at our mental perspectives. Some of the areas that we should be looking at. I listed down some. 
about adjustment to our mental perspective. Are we thinking about our comfort only? Are we thinking about our personal comfort only? We might be. But I put the word only. Can you expand your perspective? Can you look at the perspective of people who are excited if we are not ready? And if we are ready, can you look at the perspective of those people who are not excited? You see, the mental perspective has to be adjusted first. Are you thinking all the time of how are we going to adapt? And you are just working upon that. Oh, when that happens, I have to do this, I have to do that and everything. Mental perspective has to be adjusted. If not, you will not obey. What about, are you saying to yourself, I will not be moved. I will not budge. Have you already decided to dismiss, reject, or just play that? I've lost already. Those mental perspectives need to be dealt with first. A correct mindset in that approach besides accepting and adjusting. Keep, are you going to keep an open mind and say, I will continue to pray with an open mind? I'm, and, and then for those who are, are really you know, unsure, are you going to engage continuously Continue to engage instead of saying no way anymore and just hold on. But can you open your mind and say, I will engage and engage and pray and discuss and reflect. Acceptance follows, must be followed by adjustment. And the mental thoughts must be very, very first dealt with. You know, in all, uh, in all move and in all change, there are what we call the early adopters. The leadership might say, change, and there will be a group of people who say, yeah, let's go, and they follow. They are the ones that will continue to champion. And then there will be what you call the late adopters. A little bit slower, doubtful, uncertain, needs more convincing, needs more time. But they are not the gung ho one. Maybe you call the person thinking are just more careful. Every area adopt and the late adopt, and there will always be the stragglers, people who just drag their feet, who never think about anything, and even in the crossing of the river, Jordan, river Jordan, there are stragglers. That's why the the you have to wait until the whole nation goes. Not everybody is in the front line, in the first position and everything. There will always be stragglers. Herein, I give some advice to myself and to those who are the first adopters of the leadership. We need to be patient. We need to be patient are we willing to be patient to wait or are we are just going to run ahead? You follow me or you get, get lost. Wait patiently for the Holy Spirit to work with the body. Wait patiently to explain to the late adopters. Wait patiently that you'll take time to talk to the stragglers. Understand their perspective. You see, this is why I'm saying they're my perspective. And as you wait, you are waiting upon the Holy Spirit to change their mind, not your effort alone. So that there is so unity and everybody have a mindset to say that for the sake of the body, I am following them. I'm going to make this move. There are things for me to learn. There are 40 perspectives regarding actually the real fiscal ministries. All right. In Isaiah 54 verse 2, it says this thing, enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge. We love that part. 
But what about stretch your tent? Right? Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Give everything you have. Lengthen your cords. Put in more. Put in more. Strengthen your stake. Go dig deeper into it. It's our mental perspective adjusted such that the move will, may require stretching and straining us. Then the present physically. You might be quite comfortable here. You might be serving already and you say, okay, I'm serving to this. But in a move, you might be pushed even, stretched, lengthened some more. And, and, and you want to notice something. It involves more than one area. The cords, the tent, the stakes. Additional lengthening, additional digging. And certainly... Is your perspective that everything moved there will be smooth or it's just a matter of getting adapted? Are you prepared for pains? Disappointments? Are you prepared for unexpected challenges? You see, adjustment to the physical is easy. Adjustment to the mind, the right mindset is that it is a very ch challenging thing. Have you thought about, hey, this is not just about a crisis of faith and we move, that means we have passed our faith test. But that we will be tested in that process, not only at this point. One thing I want to tell you, it might sound very fearful, it might sound very glum and everything. We will overcome it. We will overcome it. You know, Singaporeans, most of us drive or even if you don't drive, you know that if you go to a country like recently, I visited Vietnam, left-hand drive. And formerly also previously, I had a chance to go to US, left-hand drive. So whether you drive or you're crossing the road, it's very uncomfortable. You know that. In Singapore, we say, what do we do? Look left, look right, look left and cross. Correct? In school, we teach us, look left first, clear, look right, make sure it's clear, look left, clear, then we crossed. You do that in US, you do that in Vietnam, you're going to get into trouble. And I realized in my Vietnam trip, I ha that happened to me. It's just uncomfortable, it's just risky. You make mistakes. I was told, careful, careful, left hand. Get in as a. And I see a driver there. And then, oh, wrong side. It's, it's, it's a good example for us to know that it will be strange, it will be uncomfortable, maybe even risky, and we will make mistakes. We have to unlearn some habits in adjustment. We must unlearn some habits. But eventually, you will learn it. Eventually, you will get into the right mindset, you will be able to accept it, and you will be able to move on. That's what adjustment is. It doesn't happen naturally. In Vietnam, they tell me, when you want to cross the road, walk slowly, don't worry. The traffic, the car, all will avoid you. Just go, they will zoom in front, zoom behind. Don't worry. So when I do it the first time, when I step out and I see the motorbike come, I want to stop or I want to move forward. I wriggling away. So I learned the thing. Don't look at them, look at them. Just at the beginning, make sure no one is too near to you. Then walk slowly. Just walk slowly and you'll be okay. It's uncomfortable. But we will make it. So my take is, the right mindset is learn to accept change. Learn to adjust as soon as you can. And the next one is to take action. You see, with acceptance is a faith crisis. And if you say, I take that challenge, 
then you will start adjusting and then activation is the third one. The moment will come when we will be very, very clear. You know, it is a confirmation from God through the leadership, right? And we will work through acceptance and then we need to take action. We must be able to take action, obey and take action before even the date of move. Are you waiting for 31st March? I think the 31st March was set for it. Are we just waiting for that or is our perspective already changing mentally and everything? You see, the activation of it needs to be before even the day. Don't wait until then. You will not be prepared for it. That's why adjustment has to come before obedience or what you call action. Action taken now proves real faith. My point is this. Put ministries we are called to first above everything. Above everything. You might have to change your children and family activities to accommodate the move. You've got to plan out right now. We are not sure whether it's in the morning or in the afternoon. You're not even sure of the time. But should it be in the morning, what is it going to be? Am I going to put priority first? You've got to adjust some of your habits. That's why adjustment comes before you can take this about your lifestyle sleeping late. This must come in and we take action now. We take action now. My fear is that we just wait until that time before anything else. Only when we do all these three steps, we accept, we adjust our perspective, and then we act. Then will we move successfully, victoriously, and not in defeat. Just in case you think I am task to speak here because I'm calling for a commitment. I'm not. Because commitment is very different. I'm calling for consecration. And I'm going to give you some points that it is different. But consecration of both the body and the leaders is what I feel. It's very important in this move. I'm not calling for commitment. Commitment is fine. But look at this chart here. I just highlighted. There are more than nine points, but I just highlighted the difference between commitment that we need to and often we, mis we mistake. Very often, commitment is about my determination to fulfill the move that will be successful. I must make it successful. I must follow it. It must be done. And that's what we think. Mine is our effort. What did Pastor Joshua tell us? It's reliance upon God. Our hope is in God. Not in our way and our methods and our determination. Very often, it's good intentions for God. No harm, but that is what it is. Your ability to perform and you go down, all right? But I want to highlight something. Do you realize that commitment can exist even in disobedience, sin, and rebellion? Yes. There are people who are committed, but it's committed to disobedience. Sure, you may not be doing that. You may be thinking, but is there disobedience in our life so that God can use us and answers our prayer can help us overcome the challenges. It can exist and therefore I'm not calling for commitment because it can be exist in disobedience, sin and rebellion. A stubbornness, a wound have it. Another thing, Commitment, you should choose what you want to commit to. 
right? So some of us are very early adopters. We got to be careful. Maybe, oh, you've been waiting for a change. Your nature is that and everything. So you commit yourself to it, but you choose what you commit to. The idea behind is we obey what God directs. It's not what we are committed to. If God says so, and even if I don't like it, I have to follow it through. It's my relationship with God. Consecration, God works through us. And it calls for that surrenderedness. It calls for that everything, God, you are first. Family cannot come first. Convenience cannot come first. Money cannot come first. Career cannot come first. God calls me to a consecrated life. Set apart for Him. This is very difficult to hear, but we are in the process of growth. But don't mistake commitment for consecration. Leaders got to be very careful. And very often we hear people say, I'm committed, I'm committed, I'm committed. And when things go wrong, no more commitment. Or they change their commitment. And then we burn out. We burn out. You know what? One thing as a pastor I'm most fearful about, people will say, pastor, I'm committed to go with you. All right? And they go with me. And they go with me. They are committed to the cause. They are committed to the reason. But they are not consecrated because they will not surrender their time or they will not surrender certain areas when it is called for. The ministry that you are never involved in, if God calls you to that, consecration means I am set apart for that. I will do it. So be very careful. Surrender means giving up all disobedience, sin, and rebellion. It has to do with other parts of your life. It's the being part. The being is more important than the doing. I'm saying that again. Right? The character is more important than the competence. So let's understand that it's more than a commitment to me. That is a consecration. Will you reflect upon this? Will you reflect upon this? A right mindset requires us to accept that change is inevitable and therefore I will embrace it that you will embrace it. And you will be confident in the Lord, not in ourselves. You will be victorious when we do it God's way, not our way. We do it God's way. And then we consecrate yourself. This is just the entry stage of our move. I pray you will take what I've shared today and reflect upon them and ask yourself, Lord, what are you speaking to me? What are you working in my life all about? Let us pray. The call is not to put in more effort. The call is a call to return to God. Sit at His feet. And with that relationship built, God will speak to us very clearly in every area of our life, the change that is necessary to move forward. It may not be, even be at a church level, but a change in your attitude. That, hey, it's not about coming to, for worship alone only. It's more than that. 
I cannot be sure what God is speaking to you, but I can just ask and urge you to learn to distill through this carefully and then our move will be one where we learn, where we mature, where we grow in it. Father, as you speak to us the required steps, I only see one thing you keep us pointing us back to our relationship with you. And we want to start there. Would you start with each of us at where we are? I pray for those become us, but will become the eventual adopters also. We pray this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen.